Hello, everybody, and thank you so much for tuning in. You're watching The Buyo Show, We're coming to you from New York City with yet another exciting episode with a very interesting guest who's going to be sharing with us an industry and part of his journey as well. So I hope that you're ready to receive what we have in store for you today. And all I want to ask you to do wherever you are around the world is to sit back, relax, and enjoy the next couple of minutes together with myself and the one and only. I promise you we didn't plan on wearing pink, but it just happened to be. <laughs> Ladies and gents, help me welcome on the show, Nke. Hi, hi. How you doing? I'm good. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. Uh, how are you feeling being here with us today? I mean, oh there's my. so much going on here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I can't lie. I'm a little nervous, but it's okay. Yeah? I'll be all right. I, I would say it's more, maybe excitement yeah. as well, because yeah. it's just like, yeah. you know, there's... Something new. Yeah. 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 It's not in the kitchen, right. like where you'd be. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's for sure. But how are you? How are you doing? I'm good. I'm good. You know, um... Still in school and also trying to build up my business at the yeah. same time. So it's a lot, but I can handle it. So, yeah. yeah. We, we sh I mean, I'm sure you, you, you're doing it right now. Yeah. You're doing yeah. it right now. Um, and the first thing I asked you when, I, when, I, when we spoke just now, I was like, your name sounds so interesting. Right. And like, I just want to learn more about it. Right. Um, Nkem, spelled N-K-E-M. Yes. Where is it from? What does it mean? So Just to help. I, I'm understand. a Nigerian man. Yeah. Yes, my father is Nigerian and my mom is from South Africa. Yeah. So um, my dad's name is actually in Kemdarim. Oh. So they just shortened my name and to give me like my own. Yeah. Basically, that's the meaning of my name is my own. Oh. So, <laughs> yeah. Nice. Where is your dad? Is your dad Yoruba or Igbo? Uh, oh. Igbo. Ibo, okay. Because yes. that's always a, the yeah. first question that, you know, you, one, when they engage with someone who's from Nigeria, right. so we're like, which, part, which tribe are you from? Yeah. <laughs> and your mom is Tosa, yes. which is um, yes. what connected her and I um, from a South African standpoint. Yeah. That's, that's exciting. What are you studying? Uh, IT, to become oh. a cybersecurity. Interesting. Yes. I would have thought um, culinary would be what. <laughs> so I actually did go to culinary school, oh. but I wanted to go and get my master's in cybersecurity so that I could have like a basically a secure job because culinary yeah. industry can be very um, up and down yeah. and seasonal depending mm. on where you're from. So my mom wanted me to get into cybersecurity and I was pretty interested in it. Yeah, it's quite a, it's quite a solid industry to yeah, be in. Yeah. It's quite very broad too. Like you can go into uh different parts of it interesting like yeah. wow that's i wouldn't have never thought that yeah um and whenever i speak to chefs um and you you heard us early on when we were recording about the show the bear right. i whenever I, I i talk to people who are in that industry i always kind of reference those types of shows mm -hmm. the bear um master chef i mean there's so many shows there's that we are exposed to yeah. that show us a little bit of the inside of that industry would right. you say that that's what f made you fall in love with with <laughs> culinary uh, surprisingly i don't really watch a lot of um yeah. cooking shows i did have a cooking instructor in my culinary school that said this is not chopped this <laughs> is not cutthroat kitchen <laughs> that is not really how a kitchen is ah. like it's a very it gets very hectic in a kitchen and yes they can show those parts of it yeah, and chopped yeah, yeah. and all those shows but it doesn't really remind me of actually being in a kitchen and working on the line and having to deal with customers and everything else, you know? Would you say Gordon Ramsay? Is it Ramsay? Who's yeah. that guy? Yeah. yeah. Would Ramsey. he be more of a, re a yes. reflection yeah. of the yeah. reality? Yes. Someone really yelling is. at you, yes. so like the, the pressure. 100%. <laughs> and that's what you, you saw and you, or at least that, it, the, that industry is what you saw and you were like, I want to get into that. Yeah. yeah. What about it was... was I guess... <laughs> So when I was younger, yeah. I was an athlete. So I had coaches always yelling at me to do better yeah. and to push myself to the best of my abilities. So when I worked in a kitchen for the first time and my chef mm. was yelling at me, like, you can do better, what is this? Um, kind of just reminded me of that athletic background that I had with coaches yeah. and transforming it into a chef yelling at me and wanting me to do better. That's so interesting that you... Battery? No, I uh, can't move Okay, okay. Closer? Huh? You want to move it closer? Yeah. Oh, okay. You good. And make sure he's comfortable as well. Oh, so it must be face this way. 
What if you, uh, his chair is slightly... Like turn it? Yeah. Yeah. Mm, yeah. Like this? Is that going to go directly to him? Yeah, for sure. There we go. Mm. Make sure he's centered. And that it doesn't cut to the white. The white, the white line. So it's just, he's still in the black side of the... Oh, yeah. Okay. No, good, good, good. good. Yeah. Test, oh. Testing, testing, testing. Yeah, that's good. That's good. All right. Um, so I was basically saying, like, the idea of the the switch between industries, because you've mentioned three industries right now right. in the same conversation, like in the, the yeah. first five minutes, yeah. athletics and sports and culinary yeah. and now IT. And, yeah. and, and, and so I guess that having that multiplicity in and of itself is something interesting to explore as a person. Yeah. Um, especially when you're open to it. Right. Um, what about the sports space? And, and like, especially what were you doing in sports? So in high school, uh, my first love in sports was basketball. Okay. Yeah. And then when I got into high school, all of my friends were playing football. So I, I dabbled in it. It wasn't really my, yeah, yeah, my yeah. favorite sport. <laughs> yeah. Very physical, you know, so, um. But I really just fell in love with basketball. Basket. Sure. Okay, okay. So that that being, I guess, two different types of sports, but in and of, in and of themselves, it's a team sport. There's right. people in the team. There's right. coaches and all of that kind of stuff. When did then culinary come into play? At what age would you say you w you, you came across so that field? Um. So both my parents working sometimes after school if they weren't home when we would get dropped off. Um, me and my sister would be hungry and mm. we would want some food to eat. Obviously, she's younger than me. Mm. So I felt like it was my responsibility to feed us. And it started off just as simple as making pancakes. And um, something about it, just being in the kitchen and making pancakes made me want to learn new recipes and actually learn how to make like dinner, mm. lunch, and breakfast. And I ended up asking um, my mom to teach me how to make certain dishes and then ever since then is really when I fell in love with it. Uh, so I guess you could say since like sixth grade, I would say. Yeah. That's when that started. And I'm sure it was probably a bonding, like you and your sister got to also kind of bond right. in that sense where, you know how you get to bond with your mom by eating the food that she, she makes for you and you right. get to understand and feel her love and yeah. her, her comfort in that yeah. sense. So that then being the bond that was created with you and your sister. Right. And they always say that food has a way of communicating. Yeah, food has really a way of, of, of speaking and, and bringing together people. Um, so from pancakes to learning how to cook, but also taking that further beyond to going and studying it is also another additional step right. that you went, then went to go on and take. Right. What informed that decision? So um, my senior year of college, I knew I was about to graduate soon. So... I didn't really know what I wanted to do after that. Mm. And at that point, it was six years into working at a restaurant on the side. And I started to apply to high-end restaurants because I figured I had the experience mm. in the kitchen to start applying to those yeah. high-end restaurants. And I wasn't really getting the offers or I wasn't getting um, looked at. And I felt like it was because I didn't have that culinary degree that most chefs have. So around December of my senior year is when I decided to apply to culinary school. Mm. And since my schooling was online, I figured I could be at the school and still do my college work at the same time. And what are you studying in college? Uh, literacy arts. My goodness. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> <That's> <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a lot of my friends call me a renaissance man because oh I'm goodness. just like still figuring out what I want to do. Because I thought maybe you, you meant high school senior, but oh, I no, no, yes, no, actual yes, college. Yes, so uh, yeah. why, why, what informed that decision? And, and I'm asking all these questions because I think also an audience member watching right. might be like, whoa, this guy's interesting. Like, how did he get to that right. decision? Because obviously that, that was also something that made you pick that course out right. of every other course that you right. could have picked. 
man, it's a lot. <laughs> it's, it's a. So what made me decide that is, like I said, in high school, I was an athlete. Yes. So um, when I decided the school that I was going to go to, I was actually on the basketball team at that school. I went mm. to Widener University my first year. It's in Chester, Pennsylvania. Mm. And while I was on the team, my first, um, what I was studying that first year was nursing. And that came from when I was in high school, I got hurt. Mm. And then I was still, even at that point, trying to decide what I wanted to do in college. Yeah. And I was in the hospital and I'm seeing the nurse and I was like, I took anatomy in high school, I took chemistry and biology, and I was like, let me try nursing in college. So I went into nursing my freshman year, and that was 2019, and then COVID happened. Oh. So then we went online, and I just couldn't do online nursing school. I'm more of a hands-on yeah. learner, yeah, where I need yeah, to yeah. be in person. Yeah. So I guess that's what I just changed majors and chose literacy arts. And what did you learn in, liber in lib literacy arts, literacy arts yeah. that, that became then something that you felt like you could go ahead and finish off? I'm not going to lie. I kind of just chose it just to get my degree. <laughs> <laughs> That's such an honest answer. Because yeah, a lot of people, a lot of people um, are in college or went to college. Right. Also, it's nice having a college degree. Yeah. Do you know what yeah. I mean? It's like, yeah. it's nice having it. So... Even if maybe the course that you don't, that you get to do is like to just get it done, right. you still at the end of the day right. are going to have a college degree. Yeah. Oh, I, I get it. Yeah. I get it. And yeah. I think maybe our audience at home might get right. it as well, right? Yeah. So, but what would you say are some of the fundamentals that you got from that experience, even the idea of, of making that decision to change, right? Because yeah. There are so many times in our lives where we, where we find ourselves having to, want, wanting to make decisions, mm -hmm. but are skeptical of the, whatever the repercussions or whatever right. that might even look like to society, to our friends, to our family. What are right. they going to say? You came here to do this. Why did you switch, right? Yeah. For you, what, made, like, what would you say was something that encouraged you to say, I'm going to do what I want to do, or I'm going to make a switch, or I'm going to make a change, because it's not right. what I thought it might be or what I wanted it to be. Right. So um, I knew I wanted to stay in school yeah. just because I come from that African background where it's education oh, is you key. Have to. You need a degree. So, <laughs> yeah, you need to get a degree. <laughs> so that's what made me stay in school in general yeah. rather than just not going back at all. Um, and then on top of that, I feel like when you're in college, not only are you studying your degree and your major, but um, I feel like in college, it teaches you um, time management, you know, especially if you're an athlete or if you have, if you're in any other, like, um, what's the word? Groups, right? Yeah, culture groups. Yeah, and culture like groups. That, yeah. And um, it teaches you to handle, okay, I have to be here at this time, and then I have to go to this class, mm. and then I have to practice, and then yeah. I have to set up time to study, and it just builds character on top of that. And then you're around... Uh, different people from different places and picking up on different cultures, meeting new lifelong friends. I'm yeah. still friends with a lot of people that I went to college with. Mm. So I feel like that's why I really wanted to stay in school. Yeah, and I like that approach because I, whenever I, whenever I, um, I go, when I'm speaking to people and I'm kind of speaking for college, you know, like right. advocating for it, right. it's always not from a point of what course are you doing necessarily, which is important. Right. But additionally, what else you get, yeah. right? Um, when I went to college, I was definitely like the things that are beyond just the course. I started film and TV, okay. which is something I was already doing as well. I didn't necessarily right. have to go to school for it because I was already in the industry mm -hmm. when, I, when I studied. But I was like, I want to also learn the other stuff, right? right. The meeting the people, understanding balance, right. learning how to balance. Um, but, and all the other things that come with the, with the whole experience of being in college. Right. Um, so I, like the take that you had kind of presented now was, was quite interesting. Yeah. And whenever kind of I, I, I look at that, that entire experience and think about the values that one can take, and you mentioned some of them now, but if you were to kind of think about the overall, and we, we're speaking now about college because I think there is a demographic of our audience who might be in or looking into getting or maybe 
or reflecting on their college experience as right. well. So that's why we're kind of chatting about it a yeah. little bit more. But if you're kind of to think about from a values perspective and a value point of view, um, there's been so many debates I've seen online about like people saying, why well, go to college? Yeah. You know, like, like uh, it's a scam. It's a scam. <laughs> 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 yeah. Um, what would you say from a values perspective and a values point of view? Um, one could, even why, even our parents advocate for it, our African parents advocate for it. What would you say is from a value perspective is, is the importance of it? I would say education and knowledge mm. and experience, being alone for the first time for some oh, people. Oh, that's a good you one. Know? Yeah. yeah. That was definitely mine. Because yeah. I was always, my mama's boy. I was uh, always, I need to be next to my mom. I need <laughs> next to my mom, you know? Yeah, and yeah. Being away from her. It wasn't far, but it was still not living under the same household mm. as my mother anymore. Uh, just learning how to live on your own. Yeah. You know? Independence. Yes. Which is a big... Yes. It's kindly now, I feel like we are in a season and a time where um, the, the Gen Z to mill millennials kind of passing down to Gen Zs is the time where we are now having to figure out mm -hmm. adulthood because we've just, uh, we're kind of stepping into it or fully stepping and embracing it. Right. So we're in a season where it's like we have to be comfortable with independence right. and, you know, grown up stuff. Yeah. You're just like, I don't want to, I don't think about it. I don't want to even talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> Adulting is a lot. Yeah. So, but it's also beautiful to see how you know, people from just various different places are kind of butterflying from these caterpillars into being these butterfly, like these adults, yes. and they're growing into their own skin, making their own decisions, right. failing, losing, learning yeah. along the way. Um, would you necessarily say that that experience of switching and changing um, degrees or changing like the, the, the direction that you were going to go for? That in of itself was some. Was it? Did you ever get to a point where you felt like you were um, failing yourself, or you had, you were failing your decision making, or there was some sort of anything from a negative point of view that you felt from making those types of transitions and making those decisions at that point in time? Um, I would say in the beginning, I was pretty disappointed that I wasn't continuing with nursing. Yeah. Because um, I feel like the nursing community is really close to each other, ah. and. Um, you know, studying with my friends together and, like you said, failing and then succeeding and uh, just stressing too stressing. together <laughs> <laughs> for an exam yeah. or whatever is coming up. Um, I felt like, yeah, I gave up a little bit, but part of me was like, uh, that's not my only option. You know, mm. like, it, that, it's okay. You know, I yeah. felt like I was blaming COVID and I was like, maybe you know, this is a sign not to continue with this, you know? Yeah. And it's not the, it doesn't have to be my main focal point. I can pivot to something else. So. Yeah. And when you then went to, because you said initially earlier on that when applying to those high-end restaurants, there was that measure that they looked at to say you had to have some sort of experience. Right. Sure, that wasn't the only thing that encouraged you to get into culinary school, was no. it? No. Yeah. Another part was it. Um, so I'm. I live in South Jersey. Um, like like I said, I'm in. Uh, I live in South Jersey. Oh yeah. And the farthest I've ever lived away from my mother was 45 minutes to an hour. And all of my friends, um, they went to schools like Texas and North Carolina, Florida, mm. Ohio. You know. And they're all encouraging me to um, get out of the area, like go mm. somewhere new where yeah. you don't know anybody at all. So the school that I picked for culinary was actually in Washington, Vancouver, which Ooh. is literally across the country. Wow. So that was another reason why I wanted to like, it was basically like, oh, I can get away and I can do culinary at the same mm. time. So it was like two for one. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah. That, 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 that being something that, um, again, back to that independence thing. Right. Because even in college in and of itself, there was some sort of independence that was encouraged. Right. But now even moving away and, and yeah. extending that. And what was culinary school like? Was it um, uh, fun? Or is it very... Because I've always wondered, like, more specialized yeah. schools, are they as fun as, like, the ones where there's everyone? Like, there's um, all these different people from, you know... My school was kind of small. Okay. Uh, there was only 15 of us in the class. Oh. Yeah, so... Um, in the beginning, I was pretty confused 
because I'm expecting, okay, we're going to be in a kitchen, right? Cooking and chefing it up. You Biting know? your hands yes, and your fingers. Yes. <laughs> the first month and a half, we were actually in a classroom oh. and it was learning the history of cooking itself and the science behind it. Mm. And I didn't even realize, like I was learning so much more and I was like, wow, I didn't know like cooking was so deep you know, yeah. and there was so much more to it rather than just putting something on the stove yeah. and waiting until it looks right and oh. then flipping it. Like there's a real science behind it that I learned. That wow. First month and, a half. Yeah. and and I think what I'm kind of now in my mind that's kind of spinning is again back to the college idea or back to the the learning the importance of right. learning. Yeah, is that things have layers to them mm -hmm. that when we kind of take time to unpack those layers, right. then we start understanding the nuances of a topic or a subject. And right. then in and of itself, that is good. Yeah. That's important. Yeah. Um, so there's 15 of you in this class and you guys get to kind of learn the history, which I guess is, is, a, is a great introduction right. to, to learning any subject. While in culinary school, what, what did you kind of feel like this was very cool to have to do physically now in the kitchen? Um, wow. yeah. Um, this might sound really basic, but I learned this technique called blanching. Yeah. And it's basically when you get a, um, it, you could use it with any food to be honest, but especially with greens. Mm. And when you see like a nice, um, laid out plate and you're like wow like all the colors are really popping and it looks so fresh when you really go to the grocery store the broccoli doesn't look like that or the asparagus doesn't really it kind of looks dull and then yeah. blanching is basically making the chlorophyll in the vegetable make the colors pop out and that's by um, soaking it in some water in some yeah. boiling water and then immediately putting it into an ice bath so what the water does is it makes the green pop more where it looks really fresh and i thought that was really cool because i was like wow like it looks and really and that's like for fresh. any type of vegetable yes you can, or do, just it with broccoli. Any type. No, okay. you can do it with any type of vegetable really it just enhances the color of the food and it doesn't do anything to the to the flavor no, the taste no interesting yeah okay and then after that you can like do whatever flavor profile you want to uh. the vegetable so those are some of the like the techniques, the the, the slight techniques that yeah. one gets to to understand more right. in culinary school. Yeah. Did you, when there, figure out what type of chef you wanted to be, or what type of kind of cook you wanted to be, from like a special specialized sense? Right. I feel not really. I feel like I always had my own flavor profile, mm. and when I went there, it just taught me the details into making that my flavor profile better. Mm. I would say. But yeah. Nothing, when I went into it, I didn't want to change the way I would cook. Just wanted to enhance my techniques. Yeah. From the knife cuts to the um, texture of a chicken when you cook it or the texture of a fish. Like learning basically how to cook everything technically instead yeah. of the way you think it should taste. Or how you, you feel. Know, or how you feel, <laughs> you know. Yeah. That's good. How long was that uh, course? It was a nine-month program. Okay. Yeah. Okay. It was actually, that's actually a fast program for culinary. And that's another thing that surprised me. I was like, wow, why are we, we're moving so fast, I feel <laughs> like, you know? Yeah. Like everything was, okay, we're learning this in two days, and then we're moving on to the next topic. Mm. I was like, why is everything so fast? And they're like, this is an advanced program. Like, that's why it's only nine months. Oh. Culinary school is usually like two years. Yeah, yeah. I would imagine. So. Um, and the techniques, I, I, I'm just so intrigued because mm -hmm. I, I love cooking. Yeah. I, I obviously don't know. I don't know how to do it like you do, <laughs> but I, I absolutely love cooking. So I'm so intrigued by just hearing yeah. these different like things about it that right. we as an audience might not even be aware of, right? Because right? we didn't we didn't have that experience. Um, so then the journey happens. You you get into culinary school. You finish a nine month program, mm -hmm. and at that point, what what would you say the type of cook that you are in that moment at that point when you graduate from that program? Um, how do you then see yourself as um, as a cook, or s as a chef, or someone with culinary experience? Um, coming out of culinary school, I feel like it gives you a lot of confidence in your cooking. And then when you go to the restaurant that you wanted to work at, and you know you feel 
kind of good about yourself mm-hmm. in a way like oh yeah I'm I went to culinary school I finished school like I know what I'm doing and then you get into the restaurant and then there goes that executive chef telling you oh you you think you must have know it all because you just graduated school <laughs> da, 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 da. this is my kitchen <laughs> this is my You're kitchen gonna, I'm gonna <laughs> teach you how to do this because every kitchen is different ah. so it's really humbling it was a really humbling experience for me after school going yeah. into the kitchen and um I learned that, okay, um, nine months of school, I still have a lot to learn, even though I just went through a nine-month program. Yeah. There's always more you can learn. Yeah. You know? So. That's a, that's a good way of, of also just looking at it. Yeah. That it's, um, and I've heard so many stories about chefs, like yeah. executive chefs. Yeah. I don't want to. Crazy. <laughs> Crazy. I, <laughs> I heard, even even on the show, The Bear. Yeah. Have you seen The Bear? No, actually, I actually haven't. Okay. So, it's about, like, the, a kitchen. Okay. Someone's kitchen. And the guy who's the main star on the show, he had, he moved to New York to come and get, in, you know, the five-star mm-hmm. restaurant experience, learning okay. how to work at the highest level, at the right. best kitchen, etc. So, he came to New York to get that experience and then went back to Chicago, where he's from, to go and open a restaurant or to go okay. and continue a His family, a family restaurant, restaurant. yeah, okay. something along those lines. Um, but then when we get to see how he got to be taught, mm-hmm. he was like so, st- like so, I wouldn't even say depressed, but he was like so gutted by the industry mm-hmm. that the people that he, that trained him in the kitchen were just so hard. Like, and I've even spoken to a couple of other chefs who've said the same thing. Like, it's just... Yeah. It just tears you apart. Yeah. Um, I can only imagine for you that how that experience might have been coming out of culinary school and having to, and it, I mean, you don't even have to go into much detail, but just from your experience, how being in an environment that pressures you to that degree, because a lot of indus- I mean, every industry is, has pressure, right. but the one that, that speaks directly to your confidence and knocks you off in that sense, mm-hmm. I'm sure it does something to you. Yeah, sure um, does. What what would you say to that? Uh, well, you really got to have some thick skin when you're working in a kitchen. Yeah. And um, it's really just, it depends on how you bounce back from when you fail in a kitchen. Because it's going to happen. You know, you yeah. can't please everyone with every dish. So it's kind of just bouncing back and learning from whatever it was that made you not succeed in mm. your plate. And... Um, yeah, just not losing complete confidence because yeah. it's a hard industry to be in. It's long hours on top of that. Mm. And then it's not only in the kitchen. You have to deal with customers, like I said earlier. So it's just a lot. It's a lot. <laughs> yeah. But you're doing it. it. Yeah, you're I'm doing it. it. <laughs> I, I love it, though. I don't know why. Yeah. I don't know why. <laughs> I used to watch a show called um, Cake Boss. Okay. You know Cake Boss? I'm not a You're not a TV guy. guy. <laughs> so Cake <laughs> Boss is a, is a family that has... But they are like more in the pastry business. Okay. So they have like a, um, a cake. So actually, there's a store in, in Times Square. Oh, really? That I think that's the original store mm. of this family who does, who has like they make cakes and cupcakes, etc. Mm. But when I used to see that show, I used to see a completely different version of, of a kitchen mm. than what I would see in like food kitchen. Right. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I don't know if it's because this one just tastes sweeter. Yeah. <laughs> so if people are nicer. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I feel like baking is, or desserts in general, is more like, you can take your time, I guess, uh. especially if it's like bakery. Cause yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. Like, there's not like a immediate rush for it. It's usually like pre-ordered, and then you go pick it up, or you prep the day before and then have everything out, you know, so I feel like you can really like take your time and. So that's why they are a lot more yeah. patient. Yeah. And when someone <laughs> wants a steak now, yeah. <laughs> if I you're in that. steak right now. <laughs> <laughs> that's actually good. That's good. Um, so what chef for you? What would you say? Which uh, um, if there's, I don't know if there's what what they call the chefs like. Yeah. So like what um, you'd like to do or what you prepare. The right best. now, I'm just on the grill right now. So okay. there's there's the head chef and then the sous chef, okay. and then there's the saucier chef. That's the guy that does the sauces. Oh. No. So there's someone in the kitchen who does yeah. specifically just yeah, sauces. Yeah, that's why they call it a line. Oh. So it's all like a line of different Interesting. cooks. Interesting. Yeah, and then the head chef usually like a uh, 
spectates really like he can hop on the line sometimes but he's really like a spectator making sure everything is done the way it's supposed to be you know and how many people would be in a line generally it depends on the menu like what there is but i would say around like five yeah interesting yeah i didn't know that yeah it's a lot <laughs> and you guys all have to communicate because yeah. you know um people can manipulate the order to what they like you know so oh. yeah this is on the menu. Hey, this is gluten free. Don't do this. That and the third. You got to talk to your saucier. Like, hey, don't put this in there. Or oh. talk to your uh, grill guy. This person is allergic to mushrooms. Don't grill the mushrooms. Or he wants them poached. Or you know. So it's a lot of communication. And then if someone messes up the communication, and then the whole order is messed up, you got to yeah. redo it all over again. And that's when the head chef comes in and yells Tries at all to. of us. Yeah. <laughs> Question I always wonder is when I get into a restaurant. Um, does my do you, does the line then prepare my food first and then it finished then the line does that that order and then the line does the next order or you just do things simultaneously in the we kitchen? We do things simultaneously. Okay. Yeah, because you got to keep it flowing. It's, uh, depending on what you order, um, there's like a time limit that we have to like try to get the food out by. Mm -hmm. So if multiple orders come in at the same time, that means like you're getting hammered with orders. So you have to. That's when it gets really hectic. It's usually like. Um, lunch and dinner times mm -hmm. where it's just really packed and a lot of orders are coming at you really fast where you just on the roll on the roll on the, on the roll, roll. roll no break just keep going oh my god <laughs> oh going. my and we're sitting there just like mm -hmm. sipping our drinks right. laughing right. having a good time while you guys hot in the kitchen <laughs> you're sweating <laughs> my goodness yeah. but i'm sure you love it i love every bit you love it yeah yeah, yeah? i love it I saw that there was a joke, uh, I don't know a joke, but it was a video that was training online where I think it was Chef Gordon Ramsay who got in trouble, not really in trouble, but people were like on social media talking about him, mm -hmm. his restaurant that had a well done steak, but it was, I, I think it was kind of burnt or something like okay, that. Yeah. And he was like, well, you shouldn't be even ordering a well done well meat. Done, yeah. You shouldn't eat well done meat. So yeah. what, is the, what is the reason for that? <sighs> what is the best meat to eat? Is it well, close to well, like, or it's, it's medium It's definitely dead. a personal preference, but if you want to order a steak, don't get a steak well done. What's the, what's the, the right nutritious way to eat it? Or the best tasting way to eat it? I would say medium. I'm a medium, medium. guy. Okay. Um, medium rare is... Medium that's, rare. That's like is that when the blood, of, yeah, that's blood still is blood oozing out? soaking out, oozing out. I'm more of a medium guy. Okay. Um, occasionally I might go with medium well, but not really because different people cook it differently. Yeah. Because medium well could easily turn into well done, you know? Because mm. it's like, well done is just rough. Yeah, and it's it tough to yeah, chew. tough yeah. to eat. I don't know. I feel like a lot of Africans like their meat uh, well done. <laughs> <laughs> My dad always orders his steaks well done. And really? We're at restaurants and we're like, Dad, can you it's please not how you should stop? Eat it. <laughs> like, why are you ordering a well done steak right now? That's actually a good observation. <laughs> I also order well done. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I think it's just how we maybe cook it back home. Yeah. I don't know. If back that's home, they cook meat till it's cooked. Till so it's, it's cooked. Yeah. yeah. No, we don't want to see any blood coming <laughs> no, out. Not Nothing red. <laughs> It must be brown on the inside, like beige right. on the inside and brown yeah, on the brown outside. outside. <laughs> I get that. I get. Yeah. But you would say, as a from a from a chef's perspective, right. it should be it should be medium, uh, yeah, kind of medium to medium. Fair, yeah. fair. Venturing now into entrepreneurial side of the kitchen, yep. which is in and of its in and of its own is just something completely a beast, yeah. right? Entrepreneur, the entrepreneurial side of anything is is a lot. Right. Um, what inspired that decision? What what kind of drove you to wanting to start your own business and kind of enterprise within the, the industry? Right. So um, I feel like growing up, I always wanted to work for myself at the end of the day. You know, I wanted to be my own boss. That was yeah. always a goal of mine. Um, and... When I was in Vancouver working at the restaurant and um, I wanted to come home for my mom's birthday and I was trying to set these dates ahead of plan. And in a sense of them saying like, no, we need you. And I can't take like a break when I need a break. 
um, that kind of rubbed me the wrong way. Mm. So I was like, you know what? I think when I go back home, I'm going to try and get my own either kitchen or food truck or just catering in general yeah. started. And I wanted to work for myself, not only so I could have my own hours, but um, cause a lot of people say, oh, you want to work for yourself so you could do this and the third. You're just lazy. No, like working in a kitchen and trying to create your own culinary product that you want to give out to your community, that in itself is not lazy. You can't oh. be lazy at all. It's actually more work. Yeah, it's more yeah. work working for yourself because yeah. you have to plan everything. Mm. And especially when you're starting up, you're doing every single part of the process. It's not like you have people working for you right yes. off the jump, yeah. you know? So um, I had my first, first thing that was hard actually was coming up with a name. I was very... How long did that process, process take? <laughs> it took me a long, long time. It took me a solid two months. Really? Yeah. 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 I was like, I have no idea what I could name it. I wanted it to be something. At first, I didn't really want it to have my name in it. And then once I couldn't come up with an idea, I was just like, you know, Kem's Kitchen sounds pretty good. Yeah. So I just came up with Kem's Kitchen. And then I wanted to host my uh, taste testing party. So I had a taste testing party in my house. And uh, just a couple kids from the community, a couple family members, uh, close friends came mm. by, bought a couple platters. I was showing them what I could give them if they wanted to order from yeah. me. Yeah. And that was pretty well. It went pretty well, I would say. And then I hosted a couple catering events, hosted a graduation party, um, housewarming party, and yeah, this weekend I'm hosting another housewarming party. So nice. that should be pretty fun. So it's just getting started. It's just getting. I like that. Yeah. I like that. Um, I think business is such a uh, to to make that decision right. to venture on your own takes a whole lot of, of just motivation yeah. in and of itself. Even to keep going, yeah. um, takes a whole lot of motivation. When you were thinking about going on your own and kind of venturing, what were you thinking, uh, vision wise? as what you wanted to see and what you wanted to give to people and what you wanted to share as a product right. of your business? Um, basically, what I want to give is I want to give to the community. I want the community to feel like they can come to Kem's Kitchen and feel at home mm -hmm. with the plates that they're getting and the food that they're receiving, you know? And when it comes to catering, I want to give them just a... I want to give them the dynamic of, okay, whatever you want, I will make for you. Mm. And at the, wherever the event is, I want it to look very aesthetic. That's one thing with me, because I feel like before you even eat, right, you have your senses, you see the food, mm -hmm. you know? So you're not going to want to eat something if it doesn't look yeah. like edible, yeah. you know? Yeah. And then you smell the food, right? And, like, you don't want to eat something if it doesn't smell like mm. it'll taste good, you know? Mm -hmm. So before you even worry about, yes, the flavor and the food has to taste well, but you want it to look nice. You want everything to look nice and neat. And I'm really picky on that. Yeah. But yeah. So that's my main thing that I want to give out, like, clean. Clean presentation clean style. Presentation great style. in taste. Yes, great in taste. Um, and is the goal also to maybe have a, an establishment from, uh, we said, kitchen people yeah. feeling? So you want to have a, 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 a restaurant or you just kind of want to have a restaurant? I think I want to have a, a food truck. Okay. Because I want to travel too. Okay. So I want to go from spot to spot with a food truck and travel the country. <laughs> That's so a. That would be really cool. Yeah, I can. Yeah. And then what types of food do you say you cater? Um, in um, business. So my catering idea was really um, whatever the client wants, oh, okay. I will do for you. Yeah, yeah. You know, whether it's Indian cuisine to Italian to Nigerian or South African, whatever you want. Like this weekend, I'm hosting an Indian oh. uh, housewarming party. So I have um, I presented them with all Indian cuisines and they picked from that. And that's what I'm going to to them on Saturday. So do you then do extensive research on each yeah, cuisine of course, before? Of course. Okay. And then also coming from the culinary school, we learned different types of wow. nationality cuisines. So yeah, we had different. There was one month where 
it was okay this week is chinese and this mm. week is mediterranean oh. or you know that's good and it was really cool so i feel like that's where i also learned how to do certain types of things yeah and then on top of that i kind of like put my own little mix in it then know? chem mix the, the, chem, the, the yeah, flavor yeah <laughs> i'll put chem, you to the chem style chem style yeah. so if, if i will put you on the test now and then what would a south african oh man what would a south african um <laughs> what, what would you present to me if i had a south african housewarming party <laughs> what would you it's g- funny because my the when um after we met you um, yeah. last tuesday my mom was like you need to learn how to cook some South African food. Like, I know I don't really cook it that much at home, but you need to learn some <laughs> South African plates. Like, what, name a South African dish right now. I was like, Mom, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, Mom, I don't know. Oh, no. Like, We're going to do something about that. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I don't know, Mom. So there's not, so you. I yeah. don't know. Oh, my God. Okay, 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 know. okay. Which I guess what's. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. Nigerian food is my. I love Nigerian food. Yeah. I, know, I love it a lot. Some jello fries in there. Oh, yeah, some jello fries. I see. Some okra I soup. see. Okra, what is it? Okra soup. Okra soup. Yeah. But so it's you like the you soup. yeah I you eat do it. that yeah. you make those. I am so shocked. Like not yeah. even like one dish nyana somewhere in there. <laughs> She's gonna be so mad when she sees this. <laughs> Because when you when you spoke about early on, you were speaking about like bringing out vibrancy in colors in right. plates. I was thinking, oh my god, a seven because we have this thing called seven colors. Okay. And it literally, when you look at the plate, it you have to have colors like right. different colors. Right. And seven colors being, and it would normally like a Christmas meal that would be cooked on Christmas or like on special holidays or some homes would do it every Sunday. Okay. So like. We wouldn't have anything fancy across throughout the week, and then on Sunday, it's seven colors. Mm. Um, so when you were speaking about that uh, technique of right. brightening up colors in right. foods, I was like, mm, that would be a good for seven colors. Yeah. Because the whole idea is to have those colors. So you'd have right. yellow and green and orange yeah. and purple from the beetroot. Yeah, okay. You guys call it beetia. Yeah. Um, and then brown from the meat, and then white from the rice. So mm-hmm. you'd literally have seven colors in the plate, oh, wow. and then some like maroon from maybe the, the chakalaka okay. which is a bean salad okay. um so then you'd have seven colors on the plate yeah, so that's what i when you said that i thought about and i thought maybe you're going to reference that when i ask oh, you this question <laughs> <I don't know. laughs> so what is normally in a, in a thanksgiving menu at home thanksgiving menu at home so well depending on who's coming okay um we'll have jello of rice oh um We'll do the turkey that no one really eats. <laughs> 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 and then we'll have some type of goat meat. Um, I like goat meat. Goat meat's nice. And then then we go to the American side. We'll yeah. get the mac and cheese, the yeah. green beans, baked beans. But my mom does her own little South African Twist, mix to the, yes. to the baked beans that I love. Um, uh-huh. so I love her baked beans. <laughs> but yeah, that's... Really so you kind of twist, you kind of merge the American to the Nigerian yeah. cuisine and kind of blend those two together. Yeah. That's cool. And how does that, how does the dynamic of being kind of multicultural, because um, I wouldn't even say only in the food, but just as a person in general, I'm sure right. it has, it plays a role in how you understand and see the world. Right, yeah. um, and it would be three in the sense, because Nigerian South African and then you're American, American you're in America. Yeah. Yeah. So having to have those three kind of different things nuances how mm-hmm. do those play a role in just how you live life and to some degree how it influences your cooking as well um i feel like it brings me a more unique sense of uh taste to yeah. things because um especially texture wise like the texture of foods nigerian texture um some of the things could feel really um slimy or gooey with the draw soup that you eat mm. and then when it comes to the american side they don't really tend to like like gooeyness. Their <laughs> texture <laughs> preference is a lot different, different than I would say an African person is. So um, I just feel like it it allows me to be comfortable eating everything, mm. you know, because like okay, yeah, something could look like this, but it could taste amazing, yeah, you know, instead of just like I said, eating with your eyes first. Mm. I I'm just down to eat whatever yeah. you want to try especially yeah. if it's something new 
So. And how do you how do you how do you present to people that ideology of of being open to trying things out? Because again, with this new ones that you have, you 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 have the um, the ability to 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 be open right. because you have to be open to your South African, your Nigerian, you right. ha- you that enables you. But for someone who doesn't have that nuance within them, and they only have this one identity that is what they know, mm-hmm. they might not even think about opening up themselves to other types of foods right. or other types of experiences. So, when presenting to them that topic how do you go about doing it i would just say eat it blind <laughs> <laughs> eat it blind yeah. yeah don't even look at it don't smell it just eat it if you like it then you like it if you don't then hey mm. <laughs> do you feel like um preference in food is is taught or it's something that's an acquired to in, to each individual <sighs> or is it more cultural i think it can definitely be taught because yeah. Growing up, I was a very picky eater. Um, Even when it comes to certain Nigerian foods that I didn't necessarily like when I was younger, and as I grew up, I was basically teaching myself to try new things. Yeah. And then that's when I was eating things more and eating different cooking styles of the same dish and finding which type of style you like more than the other. Um, That is all. I feel like that's all taught, you know? Yeah. Um, but you also could say, like, yes, it could be from your culture background. Um, if you're Spanish, eating rice and the beans and the chicken, that's what you're brought up in, so that's what you're really going to like. And then from Italians with the pastas, you know, just being open to eating new foods. Yeah. I feel like that's taught. For yeah. Sure. And I think, yeah, it's, and now that the world is, and being in a city like New York, where there's just all types of cultures and all types of people from all over the world, um, you're kind of forced to have that openness, Mm -hmm. right? You're forced to to want to, to want to know more about others. Um, But what's the plan now? What's, where are you currently right now and looking forward to go and do and, um, when are you graduating? Uh, Next May. Next month. Next May. Next May. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. So, um, still doing that in school and really just trying to grow my business. Yeah. Especially the uh, social media platform of it. Um, not really a big social media guy. Mm. So, it's hard. Like, like, I was trying to create my menu the other day and I was like, dang, how do I even do this? Like, <laughs> just want to hire someone to yeah, do it for me. Yeah. But I don't want to at the same time. I want to, like, actually learn how learn, to do it yeah. myself, you know? So that's really what I'm focusing on right now, just exposure and um, building. Yeah, growing, growing the business. Yeah, growing the business. And and if someone is like, you know, I, I like this guy. I think he does what I like. I want to I want to book him. Right. So yeah. how do how do they get how do they make sure to to stay in touch and? Uh, so, uh, my Instagram is Kem's Kitchen One, and then um, on that page it shows my business cards and basically my menu and my services yeah. that I offer. So Love it. Yep. Love it. Love it. And I think there's, there's I'm so excited to see the future because yeah. the way in which you have all of these branches of experiences yeah. and lessons learned, yeah. um, if you were to kind of even now think about the biggest lesson that in the past couple of years, um, I'd say maybe from college, mm-hmm that you've that you've learned about either yourself or just about life in general what would that be i'll definitely say consistency Mm. is uh, a big focal point in my life like um, because like i said i was i tend to bounce around from thing to thing so this is something i really want to be consistent about and determined so if you keep working on something eventually it will grow Mm. so or you'll get better yeah so yeah that's amazing. And I want to tr- I want to taste your food. Now I'm just like I want to try something yeah. <laughs> from your kitchen. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think I I definitely think I'm I'm interested to seeing how how the business grows and uh, your journey and kind of c- continuing to follow your journey along and uh, I'm sure someone who was watching is ins- might be inspired by just the idea that it's okay right. to to pivot. Yeah. It's okay to change your mind. It's yeah. okay to 
be certain about a particular industry and, and go into it. Um, mm-hmm. And maybe also look into those older passions as, that you might have had as, as a child, mm-hmm. right? As you're saying, like it's something that you kind of developed and you saw when you were, you were cooking for your sister. Right, right. Um, some of those things that we have younger, when we kind of think back to them, why did I like that? Mm-hmm. Why, did I f- why, why did I find that exciting? And then you look back further down the line, you're like, maybe that's something that I could have done or I should have done. So seeing and hearing that you went back into that passion, um, even after having switched and made it a change, that in of itself is, is commendable. So Thank you. Yeah. Thank you for joining me. Of course, of course. <laughs> My pleasure. <laughs> anything you want to leave on the table or it could be anything, anything, anything that you want people to make sure to know before before we wrap up. Um, I would just say if you if you have like any ideas or plans on opening up your own business or starting something new, like just go for it. Yeah. You know, like it doesn't hurt to try. So mm. always just go for it. Yeah. That's basically what I would say. <laughs> Love it. Yeah. What 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 message do you have for your mom? Because uh, she's the, she's <laughs> she's how this all all of this happens. So <laughs> I want you to say a message to her if she is watching. Um, uh, what message? I want to thank my mom for yeah. supporting me through all my decisions, and she's she's been my rock for sure. Always been by my side. Yeah. Um, always motivating me to keep going. You know, if she sees me slacking, she tells me to push harder. You know. So, I love you too. <laughs> <laughs> love it! <laughs> Yay! <laughs> Thank you so much for of coming course, on the course. show. I promise our audience we did not plan the pink thing. No, we no, no, we no. did not plan. It just happened to be. <laughs> <laughs> but thank you so much for coming thank on the you. show. Thank and you thank you me. at home for tuning in on yet another installment of The Vuyo Show. I hope that you enjoyed that. I certainly learned so much about the culinary industry and just tips and tricks. Now I am... I'm going to have brighter food yes. at my place. <laughs> brighter vegetables. Brighter vegetables. Make them pop. Yeah. yeah, make them pop. And of course, don't forget to support In Kim's Kitchen on Instagram and social media. And make sure you book this guy. If you're in New York City, it's the person to, to make sure to make your meals done for your events as well. I'm just going to take this off because it's, it's falling apart. <laughs> but um, yeah, so thank you, thank you, thank you. I will see you guys on the next installment of The Voyage Show. I am your favorite global darling, Voyage Timoja, for myself and Kim. It's goodbye and have a fantastic one. Cheers for now. Now let's go cook something, Kim. <laughs> 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 let's go make some food. I love it. I love talking to chefs. <laughs> I think you guys are the, the most interesting people. I had a